Hello, welcome. Take a moment, try this problem out, and then press play and we'll solve it together. Okay, so they want to know for which values of x rounded to the nearest hundredth will the log base 3 of x equal the absolute value of x squared minus 9 minus 3. Um, so let's use a calculator here, and we'll solve this in two ways. So first of all, I'm going to clear off any old equations that I have here. And first, let's enter our absolute value. Now to do that, uh, we press the math button, and then we go to number, and the first choice is absolute value. Hit enter, and you might see these brackets. You might not, as long as it says ABS here in absolute value. I'm gonna do x squared, um, sorry, x squared minus nine, and then outside of the brackets, minus three. Now. That is going to be, if we think about it, it's, you know, if this was x squared um, minus 9 minus 3, you, you're going to have, just a rough sketch here, some kind of parabola, but that essentially you're taking the absolute value of all the outputs. Instead of a parabola going like this, well, it's a really badly drawn parabola, sorry, parabola going like this, you're going to have a, actually, let me leave that there, you're going to have a parabola. So they're going like this, excuse me. Uh, let's say this is x squared minus three, let's say. This is the absolute value, um, and that's gonna take any negative input here and make it positive. Absolute value is distance from zero. So maybe you can expect something kind of like this, right? And maybe one other thing to think about is that there's also this minus three out there, so it's gonna shift it down and then Subtracting of nine, I would anticipate, I think it's gonna maybe tr translate it horizontally to the right by nine, something like this. Let's see if my instinct is right there, if it's way off. I'm gonna to go to press zoom and six, to zoom standard. All right, so my instinct was somewhat off. It looks like that initial minus nine doesn't do a horizontal translation. And maybe that's because here, let me just go back something like that. Uh, this minus nine, if it was to shift to the right, I think it, it would have to look like, I don't wanna ramble too long here, sorry. Um, it would be something like this, x uh, minus nine squared, the absolute value of that, minus three, and that would shift it to the right by nine. So something different, I'm, I'm just trying to think about this. And then log base three of x, so it's gonna be a logarithmic function, something like this. And I know it's going to cross at the point 1, 0. And that's because that just means if you had log base 3 of 1 equals 0, that means 3 to the 0 is 1. Now here, if I plug in 1 to this function, it's 1 squared, 1 minus 9 is negative 8. Take the absolute value of that. It's positive 8, and 8 minus 3 is 5. So here, this function is going to be at 1, 5. And so my sketch is a little bit off. So I just plugged in one to this function, so the output. So I'm gonna shift this over a little bit, maybe something like that. So at one, the height of the log is zero, but the height of the parabolic function with the absolute value is higher. So it's something like this. So you can see that uh, our functions are crossing. Ignore the black parabola there. That was the original drawing. Uh, two times. And we're trying to find what those x values are. So I don't know if, you, if that, I know it was helpful. If it wasn't, I apologize. So uh, instead of going through all that, we can just grab it here. Now, with uh, the log, you could hit, um, you can do a common log this way. Um, or if, I think if you go to math, let's, let's go to the bottom there, there's, you might have log base, this option right here, and you can enter in log base three of x. But you might not have that option, so you can use what's called the change of base formula. Now, what the change of base formula says is that if you have the log, of some base a of b, it's equal to the log of b over the log of a. That's a little subtle what's happening right there, but you can and you can put any base here, c. But usually we leave that base out because it maybe confuses things. The idea is that you can switch the, the base. In this case, the base is a. And I'm switching it to the common log here, so the base is 10. Take the log of this b term over the log of this term, and it will work. Or you, you can do the natural log, if that's helpful, of b over a. And the base there is e, the base here is 10. But you can do the log of any base c of b over 
log of any base of a, and these will be equivalent to our original statement here. And the way I, I remember it is that I take the log of this part, which is higher, it's the numerator here, over the log of this base, which is literally lower, so it's the denominator here. So um, long story short, oh boy, maybe I'm rambling too much. Well, instead of entering log base 3 of x, if I can't do that, I'm going to enter log of x and then divide that by log of 3. And we'll see that's the same graph. So I just change the base. And I'm just applying a version of this formula here. So I'm going to leave both of these logs on for now so you can see them. Go to graph. And you can see we're getting the same thing twice. They just overlap. OK, so let's go back, though, and let's delete, uh, let's delete the second one. And if we go to graph, we just hit second trace, and we can find the intersection. So let's do that. Oh, second trace, and choice five is intersect. And it's on my first curve right now, then hops to the second. We can't see right now. You see it's this y equals zero because the log cannot equal, uh, we can't have x equals zero on log. So enter again, and then I'm gonna kind of hover over to the intersection point that I'm interested in. And I get 2.29. So here that tells me that the answer has to be choice one. And if I go back, you can see that's 2.29. It's the only one that really works, but I could do it again. Second trace, go to intersect choice five. I'm gonna scroll over now. Okay, I'm on the, the parabola absolute value kind of thing, and then enter again, and then scroll over to my intersection point, and I get 3.63, which is the other x value that works. So I don't know if I send too much here, but basically you enter both in the calculator and find the intersection point. Thanks.